Hi there, and welcome to part four of the Print in Place C Scooter build. Today, it's time to focus on the wireless charging and battery system of the C Scooter. We can break this down into two main subsystems. Firstly, the power storage subsystem, comprising of a battery pack and battery management system. And secondly, the wireless charging subsystem, which is all about efficiently getting enough power at the right voltage through the hull wirelessly to charge the batteries in a reasonable time scale. As a quick reminder, the two unusual design constraints that make this build interesting are firstly that the hull must be printed in place in a single print with all of the electronics, battery and drive system added during the print. And secondly, that the hull must be waterproof and hermetically sealed with no holes or seals for cables, connectors or even a motor shaft. In the previous video, we covered waterproofing the hull and designing a non-contact magnetic gear drive system as well as building a wireless control system for the c -Scooter. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you like tackling out-of-the-box engineering challenges and make use of CAD, CAM, 3D printing, electronics and robotics. First, let's tackle the design of the power management system. Quite early on in the build, I decided to design the system to run at around 24 volts with a maximum of 15 amps current draw. Following the results of the magnetic gear propeller testing, we arrived at a maximum current draw for the magnetic gear stalled at around 4 amps. So I'm going to work on this basis that the maximum average power consumption of the C-Scooter will be 4 amps. So the total power consumption will be voltage times current, so 24 times 4, that's 96 watts, call it 100 watts. The next question is, what's the minimum time I would need the scooter to run for on a full charge? I think anything under 30 minutes would be rather frustrating. Let's pick that as the absolute minimum run time, which if it's running flat out at 100 watts would consume 100 times 0 0.5, which is 50 watt hours of capacity which as it happens is the same ballpark of a power tool battery. Great, so I guess I could just do one of those. Ah, wait a minute. That's probably not gonna fit in the curved hull very well, is it? Especially with all the other electronics that we need to cram in. You know what, I think I might have a go at designing my own battery pack that will snugly fit into the hull. It'll be a fun mini project on its own. Given that I'm making my own battery pack, the first thing to decide is what battery chemistry do I want to use? As it will massively affect the way that I have to wire the battery up. To cut a long story short, I ended up deciding on uh, going for lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry, principally on the basis of its high energy density, high discharge rate, one if not the most stable of the mainstream lithium ion battery chemistries. It's uh, got a pretty modular form factor and well, um, I found a really good job lot of them available on eBay. So this is what a single lithium ion phosphate cell looks like. There are a few common form factors. The most common is called an 18650, which means it's got an 18 millimeter diameter and a 60, is 65 millimeters long. This one is actually a 26650, which as you guessed it, means it's got a large diameter of 26 millimeters and a length of 65 millimeters. These batteries have a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts, which importantly is different to the 3.7 volts per cell you're probably used to if you're in a LiPo battery for an RC car or plane. These ones have a capacity of 2.5 amp hours and a somewhat unnecessarily high discharge rating of 42 amps. Apparently they're originally spec to go in an EV car battery. I think I paid around $3 per battery, which is pretty good going. Okay, so I need a battery that runs at around 24 volts. We can increase the voltage through the magic of simply connecting batteries in series. Okay, so eight cells is the magic number to get us over that 24 volt threshold. This battery configuration would give us 26 volts times 2.5 amp hours, which would equal 65 watt hours of energy storage capacity which would give us a minimum run time of around 40 minutes. One of the downsides to lithium ion batteries is they are fairly fussy about what voltage that they need to be charged at and discharged to. To ensure that each and every battery cell is being maintained within the required voltage range, a key component of a lithium ion battery is something called a battery management system, it's simply referred to as BMS. This one is an 8S 24 volt. Well, we've already seen that this was really more like 26 volt uh, nominal voltage. And if we want to charge it to 100%, then we actually need to supply it with 29.2 volts. It's spec for 20 amps continuous discharge and 10 amps charging, which will be plenty for this system. And it apparently also has a sort of a last resort overcurrent protection for both charging and discharging current limits. If you're interested, I'll uh, put a link to it in the description below, along with the other components in this build. You can see that it comes with quite a few wires. That's because each cell string in series needs to have its voltage individually monitored. Since I only have one cell in each string, this makes it a little easier. Here's the wire diagram for a unit of the type that I've got. I borrowed it from the manufacturer's website as it's as clear as anything I could come up with. Great, so now the battery pack needs to be wired. Now let's design something that will fit snugly into that C-scooter hull. I'll go for a crescent-shaped outer battery holder that has a base plate followed by four batteries, then a space between the cells there so I can attach the BMS monitoring cables, then another four cells, and finally a lid. Oh, I think that looks pretty compact. Right, let's print out the parts and get it assembled. 
Here are the parts. Let's first add the battery terminals to the blue top, middle and bottom parts, then solder on some thick gauge wire to create a path from the first cell to the last cell to give us the eight cells in series that we're looking for. Solder on the BMS cell monitoring wires to each of the positive terminals of the cells, plus an initial ground. Then solder on the thick gauge wire to the positive and negative terminals. The BMS then sits between the negative terminals of the battery and the negative wires of the external charging or discharging system with the positive battery connected straight to the external system, which in our case is the motor controller for the load and the wireless charging circuit. Speaking of which, onto the wireless charging subsystem. Great, so we now know what the vital statistics are for the voltage, current and capacity parameters for the power management system to design and source a wireless charging system to feed it. After doing a bit of research, I think a resonant inductively coupled wireless charging system should give me the best bang for my buck. Unfortunately, very few that I found actually even quoted an output current, but this one seemed to be the best output power to size to cost balance. It's got an input of 24 volts and an output of 12 volts and will deliver up to two amps, which would be great and would give me 24 watts of charging capacity. Let's create a quick test rig to see if it's any good. Let's design a holder to mount the tr transmitter coil and receiver coils on a nine millimeter rail that I had lying around so I can vary the separation Here's the assembled test rig. Okay, so here is the test setup for the wireless charging. We've got the power source, which is working at 24 volts. Here's the voltage, here's the current. Power source runs to the transmit coil, which is here. Powers a receive coil. We're gonna drive the motor. We're gonna look at the current that's going to the motor. But as we bring the two coils closer together, we're gonna see how much power, well, at least current, we've got flowing through the motor. Let's start off 35 millimeters, 30. Oh, you can hear some powers going, see it. 28 millimeters, right, let's go to 25. Okay, at 25 millimeters exactly, 168 milliamp. That's 25, you can hear it, that's 24. Four, you can already hear the uh, speed of the motor going up. 23, 22 millimeters, 21 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 19 millimeters, 18 millimeters, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. And that's the end. So let's do it all again, but with um, voltage instead of current. Okay, now we're measuring voltage. 30 millimeter, 28 millimeter, 27 millimeter, 26 millimeter, 25 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 2 millimeter, sorry, last one was 23. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Right, okay, let's tackle the output voltage now, as we need 29.2 volts to charge the batteries to 100%, and we're currently outputting 12. To do this, I'll add a boost circuit, which has a sole purpose to take an input voltage and step it up to a higher voltage, which I can tune using this little blue trimmer component to adjust the output voltage. I think this was about $1 each, and supposedly handles three amps, and can boost up to 35 volts. Let's add it to the charging circuit and see how the output voltage, current, and power compare. So with the separation at five millimeters, we seem to be putting about eight watts of power into the motor, which is a little underwhelming. Let's connect it up to the battery to see how long it takes to charge. But wait, I have a plan to hopefully double this power. But for now, we'll try it with this setup. It's 0.5 amps. Oh wow, that is getting very warm. Hmm. Don't think that's gonna last long. Right, let's check the voltage. Seem to be at 26 volts across the two terminals. So let's try a heat sink on this little guy. See if that does anything. Looks like it takes about five hours to charge. Okay, so my plan is to add another wireless charging set of coils and boost converter for good measure to the system. Let's see how that performs. Okay, so here is the new and improved system. As you can see, I've doubled the number of wireless power transfer units. Now we've got one here and one here. They're both separated by about six millimeters, which is pretty similar to what I'd expect. When we put it inside the hull, I've actually decided to use two boost step up circuits, partly because I thought, hoped it was gonna reduce the, um, the heat accumulation. And you can see I've also put some little um, heat sinks on top of the inductor to try and keep the circuit as cool as possible. But it's also there for redundancy. So just in case when I put it inside the hull, one of these burns out, I'm not expecting them to be particularly great, or one of the wireless charging units um, malfunctions, we should still be able to charge the battery, albeit at half the rate. A half the rate is a lot better than at no rate. We've got both these wireless power units and boost converters connected in parallel with the load. In this case, we're gonna first of all try it out with a propeller, just to, just to see what kind of current load we can get. 
Yeah, look at that. Okay, let's see if it'll charge. Great, so for battery charging, we're now actually getting around 25 watts actual charging power. But the C-Scooter battery pack should charge from zero to 100% charge in around, what's it, 65 by 25, so two and a half hours, which will be totally acceptable for the version one of the C-Scooter. Perhaps in a future iteration, I could use a single bigger transceiver and receiver coil, and maybe even design it in a way that I can include a ferrite core to improve the energy transmission further. Why don't you pop a comment down below if this is something you'd like to see me test in another video, along perhaps a ballpark of how much power you need it to transmit over, say, a centimeter or, or half an inch, for it to be something you'd consider for your next project. But for now, I shall definitely call this a success. Next time, I'll be trying to bring it all together and fit all these systems into the C-Scooter and have a go at actually printing the whole C-Scooter hull in place in a single print. And who knows, maybe if you can give it a go. How exciting is that? Thanks for watching. Bye for now.